So in my lifetime, I know of a Howard Stern. I don't know if he's still on satellite radio nowadays. He used to be on regular radio. He used to be on television a little bit in late night. And openly, there was a reason for that. His mouth put people at discomfort. He even had a black female staff member as a secondary co-host who was also just as profane. He had a short midget who was as foul-mouthed as him, and he literally put himself together with a bunch of people who all sort of talked like him, smoked like him, and did whatever things he did like him. That is how we build teams in the realm of America. We put together and produce people with like minds, like hearts, like holds, and like souls, and they get along fine until they produce a problem and they can't go on anymore. Now, if we were to pretend to be Howard Stern for a day, we might be cussing like a sailor and literally being profound and profane about all sorts of topics that are taboo to talk about. The value of that program was that it did talk about risque topics. It did talk about politics. It did talk about sex. It did talk about a lot of things, and I only watched it once or twice when it was on some cable program, and I was probably staying in a hotel at the time when I had money to do such a thing. But openly, what I'm talking about today is practically a really tough topic. I'm going to hit it really hard as a reporter, and I'm going to make sure that people of all walks of faith get how it feels to be that individual. I've done a good amount of study on this topic, and I'm not stupid about the medical science that goes along with it. I'd like to also say I've done some investigative research into the Vatican and other soul-searching places about whether or not it's appropriate for there to be judgment on this particular topic, too. There's a politician out there running for president who I think has got a good chance, as long as she focuses on truth, justice, and in the freedom of life for all people. Now, when I say that, you'll have to go and look her up. I know her first name is Kamala, I think, if I said it right, but openly, you might want to check her out. She's a black woman who's intelligent. Now, am I promoting a politician? No. I'm just saying I like some of the things I hear her say. You see, that's the way we begin a relationship. We like what someone says. You're not likely to like what I'm going to talk about. You're not likely to care what I'm going to talk about. But what I'm trying to do is put this topic in a realm that you can personally grasp completely and fully in your mental state of mind. Psychologically, emotionally perhaps, depending how empathetic you can be to other people's situations, and clearly spiritually. I'd like to begin openly with the physical aspects of a reality. There are many handicaps in this little world of the human realm. I doubt one person in the world would disagree that there are handicaps and physical deformities that occur to people across the world and across the globe. I've talk and talked openly about the men in Italia, or Italy, sorry, that was Japanese, in uh, who openly have fur all over the face and look like wolfmen. I've shared comically and not inappropriately about the fact that there are children who have been born with tails that actually wag. We don't know how that occurs exactly, but I'm sure a scientist has figured it out by now. But I'm trying to talk about then there's physical deformities where a person can't walk well. There's a lovely little girl who works at a restaurant where I go regularly who has that gait. There are other people who have lost limbs. There's lots of physical deformities that we know about in birth defects. We practically regard them, we pray about them, we try and help those people when they're impoverished, and we do that regularly. But there is one group of birth defect that we are not allowing for in this land. At least the religious right wants to make them an abomination to God, and that's going to be a tough topic for people to tackle. The reason that we're tackling is, is because I think it's been poorly managed by all the parties involved. So I'm going to tell you the different sides of the story, like any reporter would. There is a pastoral community that wants to say that a transgendered person is immoral. They want to say that the Lord did not produce their soul. Point blank, that's what they're saying. They're saying that a mother God, a father God in heaven that creates all heaven and earth did not ever produce a child with a soul that is one thing and a body that's something else. I want you to ponder that a little while if you're a person of faith. That you want to say that everything in the Bible is true, that nothing the Lord creates is unholy, but you want to sit in judgment against the Bible's literature that says we can't say something's unholy. 
That's the first point. The second point I want to talk about is the medical community. There's a medical community of religious practitioners that are coming in from foreign lands that wholly beat, rape, and harm these people. I want to be very blunt about this, that you could go to a practitioner that you've evaluated and discover that they might be Catholic and that they will not apply to you birth control. You learn that fact, you decide, okay, you won't give me birth control, I'm going to go find another physician who will. Obviously, this is an adult conversation, so turn it off, folks, if you've got a kid in the car, unless you're trying to educate your teenagers about different points of view. Now, when I say this, we also have to look at physicians who lie, steal, and cheat a person out of their rights. There are trans people that call physicians. They put their private condition of having a physical defect with regard to their souls in front of a physician's mind, in front of their staff to say, do you handle this issue? And I'm a reporter, so I'm going to talk about it that way. Do you handle this issue? The physician's people will say, of course, we help all people. Please come have an appointment. We'll help you. Or they'll say, we have to do a physical evaluation. And that's somewhat lawful, but not exactly. But let's just continue with this stint. That person waits for months to go see that physician, and they get there only to be told that that physician has absolutely no background of science, no medical study, no prescription at all to help that individual. Now, was that human being just lied to by a physician's community about their rights to have that information up front before they paid for an appointment to come in for services and fees that are related in any clinic or any hospital setting? That's a second view. The third view practically is that we have a mom and dad who birthed that child and saw that butt naked kid through diapers. That family may or may not accept the soul of the child. Many struggle and then some that are more enlightened just start to discover the beauty and design of the soul of their child. They recognize that that soul is wholly, totally male or female but that the child has a physical situation that needs to be addressed. Some children are loved that way to that point that I'm going to love my child's soul because that what goes that is what goes to heaven and that is what I'm seeing through this child's behavior naturally. This child hasn't been trained to do this. This child hasn't been told to do this. This child hasn't been asked to do this. This child hasn't been lied to to do this. This child hasn't been bribed to do this. And openly, my little person here in front of me is showing me the signs of a male or female child. Irrelevant and irregardless of their genitalia that was seen in diaper situations or in bedtime situations or bath time situations when parents lovingly help their kids get dressed and undressed. Now, as the child ages, it really depends on how parents handle that situation if they were made aware of it, or if they ignored it, or if they tried to beat it out of the child. And when I say beat it, I might mean physically beat it in the olden days. I might mean emotionally beat it. I might mean psychologically beat it out of the child. We also have people out there who are friends and family, who at some point learn, whether by intention or gossip, of this person's condition that they have a physical soul of a male or female, but their body and genitalia doesn't match. Now, if we go back in time to a program that launched this whole thing called the Harry Benjamin Standards of Care, where physicians and psychiatrists and psychologists and therapists studied this group of people with this physical defect, they pretty much determined that the absolute best health-oriented situation for these people was to allow them to what they called back then transition. Nowadays, I think it's called becoming one's true self, which a lot of people can relate to because most people want to be their true selves. They want to show their true selves, the good, the bad, and the ugly, to the people they love. They practically want to get married. They want to have offspring of some kind or 
benefactors of some kind from their life. They want to have friends. They want to have a family unit. They want to have a church, possibly, in which to worship. And they practically need to have employment. Now, there is a moralistic attitude in the land that people don't have the right to decide what they do with their bodies. The federal government has sort of made a gender bias in the area of hormones. I just learned from a Walmart pharmacist, allegedly, that estrogen is not regulated by federal law, but testosterone is. The reason that testosterone is regulated by federal law is because sometimes illicit people, in other people's minds, use this hormone to bulk themselves up for bodybuilding or other reasons, whether it's self-esteem or what have you. The reality is that the federal government, I guess, decided that they don't want to allow people the rights to their own bodies. And they're going to regulate that hormone and not regulate the other one. So what that means is that people with souls that are female can gain access to estrogen with very little problem other than finding the proper physician to help them to align whatever's going on in their cellular health with the need of estrogen, whatever level of depletion they have. When it comes to the other side, men of all ages and shapes and sizes that have a low testosterone situation, they can go to a physician and gain additional testosterone. My own father, totally a biological male, had a testosterone cream that he took. You see, long ago, scientists and uh, practitioners learned that oral testosterone is not really great for the liver. So they kind of got rid of that possibility. Estrogen can be taken in oral form. It also can be delivered in a shot. I believe it also, there's a cream and a patch. I remember my mother in her late stages of menopause wore a patch. I don't know if she still does because she doesn't drop trow in front of me much anymore. Thank God. But openly, she was one of those women that would parade around in her underwear when she was hyper, um, having heat flashes and vacuum. As a man, I sort of got used to it. I also now just simply walk away or leave when she does that. At some point, it just got bothersome to me. And it's sort of comical, too. And literally, she did provide for us underwear most of her adult life, even now, today. She's purchased for me a pair of underpants, and I appreciate that. That's what moms do. They make sure their kids have underwear, clean underwear. I think that's even a great business book. You know, does your business have clean underwear or something like that? You'll have to look it up. Anyway, my point is that we're talking about a really controversial issue today, but we're not talking about it practically at all in a way that makes sense. We've got these ridiculous people who want to say that there's a violence in these people. We've got another set of religious rhetoric that wants to say they should not be allowed in bathrooms. I'm like, okay, first of all, this is a fundamental human rights underneath the International Declaration of Human Rights that people are allowed to have a bathroom. Let's also talk about bathrooms. Bathrooms have individual stalls. How many people are voyeuring over a stall at somebody going to the john? I just don't think that's reality. I've never known one person in any group of any kind that does that crap, that plays that game. I know people listen in on what people record in the library because they're vultures of information. The rooms are not really soundproof. So if someone's listening to me now, I can't do anything about that. I put myself in this room to not be bothersome to other people. And I'm not talking all that loudly, but I am trying to produce a quality cast that is easily heard. Now, practically, we also have people that want to say that there's a whole bunch of people in different communities that are not traditional that are trying to change the lives of children. That is an abomination unto the Lord. You see, the soul is what we're not talking about in these situations, and physical deformities is something else we're not talking about in these situations. We're literally just trying to reduce people to their genitalia. I know of a particular situation right here in Indiana of a man who literally has been a man a very long time, since age three. He discovered that the birth defect was causing him all sorts of difficulties in his 20s, not only socially and financially, but all meaning employment was difficult, 
to feel himself. But openly, he was also feeling incredible migraines, nauseousness, all sorts of things. So what he did was he went through a process called the Harry Benjamin Standard of Care, in which he had to do a lot of things. He had to have a lot of tests. He had a lot of try a lot of different areas of hormonal balancing from one side of the spectrum to the other. He had to go through psychological evaluations with a PhD level person for at least two years. He then had to do a life test with no extra help at all hormonally, or possibly he, at that point there was hormones. I don't know the entire thing at this point of history and how late in the game it is, but in reality, he passed. He went on to produce a professional life. He produced a family. He produced a job. He produced employment. He produced a company. He produced community service. He produced a lot of other people. No one in that realm of his life knew anything about the deformities of his genitalia except his lover and life partner, who was female, and literally a nurse who understood these things, had studied about these things, read about them, all the material she could get her hands on so that she could be appropriately prepared for life as he aged. And then his birth family. Now, when I share this story, I wanna share what's happened to him since. And I want you to really put it in terms of your own physical health as you listen. If I've lost you already, too bad. For those who are still with me on this journey, good for you. We have to think about these things logically. We have to think about these things practically. Now this man lost his life partner, his spouse, his lawfully wedded whatever. They just discovered that they were not equally yoked. There was a need for other things in both their lives. They met other people. They moved on. But at that time in life, it was hard. Because at that age of life, people are in a different stage. Relationships are managed differently. So I want you to think about your life now, if you are in your 40s or 50s. I want you to think about your life partner right now, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whatever it is, your spouse, your live-in, your whatever. And I want you to think about losing that individual. And I want you to think about what that would be like. Would you go through a period of loss? And I'm not going to get off on the topic of loss and grief and all that too long. But most intelligent people know there's a, several stages of the grieving process. Most people know it takes a while to recover and rebound if you really deeply love someone. And if it wasn't a good fit, then maybe you just snap in a year and pick somebody else. God help you. It's probably not the right person, but okay. But that's what scientists tell us. Not me. Not my opinion. I base my opinion based on research. Now, what I'm talking about here is a man's life. He's lived his entire adult professional life this way, with this condition, with a deficit, according to people whose opinions to him don't matter. He's lived happily, peacefully, successfully, provided for a family, a child, a loved one, honored his father, his mother, to a point. He's kind of got a difficult relationship with her, but, you know, these are truths. I'm telling a real story. I'm reporting real information. And then what happened? One of his siblings decided to give his genitalia opinion because she has not actually seen his genitals in any state as an adult. She might have changed his diapers as a child. But openly, she decided to tell that information to other people in a low point in his life. She told local law enforcement. And as a result, he's had great difficulty since. You see, there are people in the gay community, and I'm going to give you that additional perspective, who literally want to say, you have this genitalia, therefore you're this type of sexuality. You can't prove that. 
Now, when I say it, I'm slowing down for a reason. I want you to really think this over. And then I want us to get to fundamental human rights. Do we fundamentally have the human right to have a privacy of our own genitalia away from all strangers and law enforcement, period? Did that man have the fundamental right to have the privacy of his genitals from his own siblings and sisters and brothers at this late stage of his life? Because something you don't maybe know if you're not a part of the research community, if you're not listening to medical things, if your mother doesn't bring you home a Mayo Clinic letter and give you photocopies or whatever additional copies she pays for on a regular basis, where you're not being bombarded with the science of the mind or science of the body or scientific discoveries, is that in truth, once the testosterone was put into that man's body, things started to shift. He removed all his headaches, all the cellular problems he was having and the inappropriateness of things going on for him ceased. And that's why he was able to be productive, successful, and go on in life. Now, when I say this, how do you feel about the story? Do you feel that people have the right to find a rightful physician with the proper experience, educational background, and exposure to cellular issues gain that physician's knowledge, do something to protect their health, and have the right to do so based on whatever principles they believe in of faith or spirituality, not really a part of that process. The reason I bring this up is because the other day I had a conversation with a gay woman, and she didn't quite get it until I laid it out for her. And I'm going to lay it out for you real clear now because I've laid it out in a marketing piece only once in my marketing channel. I basically said the GLBT community had failed in their marketing of their issues. And here's why. Every human being on the planet who is of a reasonable age, and I'd like to prefer adult age, but you know, we've got teens who play around, has the right to decide who, first and foremost, they're gonna show their genitals to, second, who they're going to make love with, and third, who they're going to share that private, intimate information with, period. Now, if in your life you have a spouse and you proudly wear a wedding ring and you proudly hold their hand in public and you proudly do all those things, are you literally walking into any place ever and saying, Hi, my name's Sally and these are my genitals. Flash. Like the opening of a trench coat which we used to see comedians of. And literally, I had that happen to me in college when we were in the park. Somebody came up buck naked, and that was an odd experience. And I'll tell a story about that another day. I was like, get away from me. But openly, people do got crap. But in general, in the regular population of the land, do we not believe and feel that our private parts are 100% ours, first and foremost? Second, that who we expose them to and who we use them with are also totally 100% ours, meaning mine or yours when I say that. And third, do we not truly have the right to be refrained from the harm, hazing, and harassment of a religious rhetoric that is literally killing people over the stupidity of their belief that the Lord did not make these human beings. Society doesn't make these human beings they kind of established a long time ago. It's not a mental health issue. They figured that out in the DSM-4. But we still have physicians and old school doctors and religious banter coming in from foreign physicians, from foreign Asian lands, not East Asia, Middle East, that don't like these people, that believe that one little verse in a scripture makes them holier than thou, to say these people are unholy and will kill them or rape them and prove they're not this in their souls. All that proves is that those people are monsters. 
Now back to the gay community because I want to address that. The gay community, not all of them, but some of them, feel that these people are traitors to their cause. I'm sorry, this is another marketing failure. My cause of my private parts is not your cause, unless you are protecting my rights of those three items. My right to present those in a loving manner to the person I choose, my right to utilize them how I so see fit in a private setting amongst consenting adults, and three, my right to have the privacy of who I decide to sleep with not put a part of any government document or any hospital record with a physician, period. And I only say that because this particular individual's doctor, physician, died. He had seen many doctors over the years, all who agreed with his situation and cellular health needs, all who prescribed his testosterone, all who did all those professionally correct things. Then his latest doctor died. He went searching for physicians in Indiana in a highly religious state, and he ran into all kinds of barriers. He was told that he would be helped professionally, and there was no problem in maintaining that hormonal health, but it literally turned into a two and a half year nightmare for this man. To the point now that he has been destroyed by a hate crime against his life that no one, not even his siblings, will recognize. This man's clothing has been cut, his property has been stolen, his rights have been taken, he's been publicly uh, outed, if you will, and that's what they call it in the gay community, but he's not gay. So to the point that it's also very technologically possible that someone is pinging people's phones. Now, another audio cast, I'll tell you about some of the other horrors that he's endured, but I want you to really think about this in return in regards to your own life. You see, the marketing failure of the GLBT community, and I'll probably be hit for this, and it's okay. I want them to take a pot shot. The marketing failure is that we have the right to privacy, period. Every human being has the right to decide what flag they're going to fly, when they're going to fly it, who they're going to fly it for, and whether or not they want that flag publicly flown. There is a belief that if we're out, we're more safe. It's not true. If we're in, we're not necessarily safer, but we have the right to be in. And when I say we, I'm just talking about people in general. Whether you're heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, whatever is being currently discussed, I don't even know what the Q's and the other things stand for that have been added on to that group. I don't know what they are. I'm old, and I don't walk in those communities much. But practically what I know is that people have the right to assembly underneath federal law, which means they have the right to find other people and make affinities with them and avoid those that they don't find safe in their life. That people have the right to freedom of religion and have a faith if they wish it or not, regardless of their orientations. And that openly, I'm not trying to stretch this out, but I'm just simply saying that under human rights, especially under human rights, these people have the right to choose their physicians and be free of being monstrously attacked by any militia of any kind. That is the International Declaration of Human Rights. Now, practically, some of you who are still with me are like, whoa, this is a heavy topic for a guy who's usually talking about God. But I am vehemently angry with that community of God-loving people for thinking that they have a right to police, to mob, to harass, to harm, to attack, to seduce and lie about to these people, only to beat them physically. You see, physical abuse is illegal in America. Silencing a life is called murder. Silencing the soul is not something that the religious right has the right to do. And practically, if you don't start to get on the bandwagon with these people, with the protection of rights to their private parts, then what's going to say that anyone couldn't do the same thing to your private parts, or any physician couldn't decide to snip you off, 
or enhance you in some way. Do you remember that uh, news story some time ago where there was this masochistic physician who thought he would enhance while women were getting their gynecological exams, would enhance their sexuality by cutting them? He literally put them out without their permission and ruined their bodies. Now I'm pausing for effect. I'm asking you to really think about this in all the logical aspects of a physical defect, a physical misnomer, a physical abnormality, a physical situation where the soul is not satisfied. The souls of Down syndrome children who are incredibly loved by their parents are some of the most beautiful in the world. They're some of the most loving folks out there. They are at risk to predators, which is why their parents vehemently protect them. We have to learn to protect the rights of all people, all situations, all medical conditions, and all information, period. As a man who's been cyber hacked and had files deleted off his computer at the local libraries and literally been pounced on by a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons in their minds that they're doing something correctly, I have to say that I sort of understand what's going on with this issue. This is a fundamental right to life issue, meaning that a human being has the right to decide what they will and won't put in their bodies, what they will and won't tolerate in their life, what they will and won't fabricate in forms of a lie. You see, if the soul is male, he's not going to lie and say he's female. If the soul is female, she's not going to lie and say she's male. And if every aspect of the person's life is conducted in those gender formats, then there's no problems. We also know there's a medical condition of hermaphrodite that could have been a part of this process that could have, a physician could have possibly made the wrong decision upon. We don't really know in that beginning birth canal situation what happened to that boy's genitals. We also know that there are physicians who botch bringing children out of the womb and literally decide to snip off deformed things. There's a great book on that. Sad story, but the man finally found happiness with a very loving wife. But he was supposed to be a boy and somebody made him a girl. So we really have to get beyond this idea of bathroom talk, which is so moronic and makes us look like fools to the European nations that took care of this crap long ago. They perfected surgeries, no scars, nothing. So let's get off the subject that is so frigging stupid that people don't have the right to their own bodies. And maybe that's what my Marx law should be about, that people have the right to their own bodies, period. Now, this has been Blake Ensign of Blaze Communications, LLC, in Indianapolis, Indiana, talking about a hot topic that some politicians are getting onto, that I want them to make sure they're thinking about it in a logical and educational and scientific and moral way. So to recap, the soul is put into this by being by God through a loving set of parents, we hope. The body has the potential for all kinds of maladies. Defects do occur of all different types and kinds that may not be an abomination to the Lord, but openly we sometimes have to deal with in a way that's constructive to producing a healthy, prosperous life. And finally, a person's sexuality is really nobody else's business unless there's an invitation in that regard. That's my humble opinion. And that people have the right to love who their soul chooses to love. So that's it, I guess. Thanks for listening.